Hi, I'm Rabbi Pini Duna. Welcome to my weekly Erev Shabbat Dvar Torah. This week it's about Parshat Shemot. The late Harav Lord Jonathan Sachs, Ichron Olivracha, once said that the proof that Moses was the greatest of all the prophets was that when God asked him to lead the Jewish people, he refused four times. He kept on saying to God he didn't want to be the leader. Me? Are you kidding? Who, who am I to lead? They won't believe in me. I'm not a man of words. Please send someone else. Moses seemed to know exactly what he was letting himself in for. Somehow he realised that however hard it is to be a Jew, being a leader of Jews is much harder. But how did Moses know that? Why was he so adamant? The answer to this question can be found in the earliest stories of Moses recorded in the Torah. One day, when he was a young man, Moses saw an Egyptian beating up a Jew, almost killing him. So he intervened and saved the Jew's life. The next day he saw two Jews fighting with each other, and once again he intervened, but this time he ran into trouble. The man he stopped from fighting the other Jew said to him, Who appointed you to be our leader? Who appointed you to tell us what to do? Just to be clear, at that stage, Moses was not thinking about leadership or anything like that. And already his leadership was being challenged. It's crazy stuff, right? And these are the first recorded words spoken to Moses by a fellow Jew. God managed to persuade Moses to lead, but the idea and practical aspects of leadership were always a challenge for Moses. In Dvarim, after 40 years of leadership, he says it explicitly. How can I myself bear your problems, your burdens and your disputes all by myself? And in Parshat Bahalotcha, Moses has a complete meltdown. It's in Perik Yudalef. Look it up. He asks God, why have you brought this trouble on your servant? What have I done to displease you, that you put the burden of all these people on me? Did I conceive them? Did I give birth to them? Why do you tell me to carry in my arms these people as a nurse who carries an infant to the land you promised on oath to their ancestors? I cannot carry all these people by myself. The burden is too heavy for me. If this is how you're going to treat me, just kill me. And if I found favour in your eyes, kill me and do not let me face my own ruin. So I have a question for you. Why are Jews so difficult to lead? Why are they such impossible people? And I think the answer can be found in something that was said by Moses' greatest challenger, Korach. Listen carefully to what he and his associates said to Moses. Rav lachem, ki kulam kudoshim, v'tacham Hashem. They came as a group to oppose Moses and they said to him, you have gone too far. The whole community is holy, every one of them, and the Lord is with them. Why then do you set yourselves above the Lord assembly? Korach's motives were wrong. He spoke as if he had a democratic value, but what he really wanted was to be an autocrat. He wanted to be the leader himself and make all the decisions. He tried to use democracy as his route to power. But there is a powerful hint in his words of what was at stake when it comes to Jewish leadership. Jews are strong-willed. They are full of personality. And that's what Korach meant when he said, the whole community is holy, every one of them. Everybody thinks that they are the holiest one, the most important one. It's always been the same, and it always will be the same. And if you think about it, that is our greatest strength. But correspondingly, it's also our greatest weakness. It is our strength because there were times when Jews found it difficult to serve God. But ultimately, they could not serve anyone less than God. They were the ultimate Am Kashe Oref, stiff-necked people. And let's face it, people with stiff necks find it hard to bow down. The prophets would not bow down to kings. Mordechai would not bow down to Haman. The Maccabees would not bow down to the Greeks. Their successors would not bow down to the Romans. And so it has been throughout our history. Jews are incredibly individualistic. At times this makes them unbeatable, but it can also make them almost ungovernable. Yes, it makes them almost impossible to lead. And that is what Moses discovered in his youth when he was trying to help his people, when their first response was to say, who appointed you as our leader? 
and our judge. That is why, so many years later, he was so hesitant to take on the challenge of leadership, which was why he refused the offer four times. The greatest advantage of knowing history is that it creates self-awareness. Once you know your roots and who you really are, you can know your strengths and, of course, your weaknesses, and you can know what your challenges are going forward. Moses' refusal to take on the leadership role should remind us that at the very beginning of our history, we were very complicated to manage as a people, but that we still merited great leadership. We managed to forge a way forward that enabled us to withstand every challenge and to remain beacons of monotheism and God's mission for creation for over 3,000 years. The message is we merit great leaders when we stay true to our Jewish roots. Challenging leadership is not an issue as long as we all remain on board with the ultimate goal, to be true to who we are and to what God wants from us. Wishing you Shabbat Shalom and Good Chodesh. Have a beautiful month of Shvat. Good Shabbos, good Shabbos.